Alright, back again. And today, I have a new little toy for you all. Um, today is January 15th, 2016. And I have a new gadget here. This is the Samsung Q1 UMPC. I don't think there's enough light for you guys to see that. But this is the Ultra Premium model. Now before I talk about the computer, or UMPC, I want to talk about what a UMPC is and what they were used for. Uh, back in the mid-2000s, UMPCs, or Ultra Mobile PCs, were created as part of a project called Project Origami. The idea was to have a pocket PC, in a sense, uh, which was have a PC that you could take basically anywhere on the anywhere with you um, even if it means you know just going to the grocery store with this thing um, having a virtual grocery list on these things um, the UMPC was discontinued in 2012 uh, when Project Origami was uh, scrapped because uh, and by then, netbooks, and that was also the year netbooks died too, netbooks were ultimately more popular than UMPCs, and many people preferred them over the UMPC, mainly because netbooks at least had a full-size keyboard, whereas you can see on a UMPC, you have a split keyboard, this one has a split keyboard, and um, some of them had uh, slider keyboards, but they were just tedious to type on. So, that is one main reason why UMPCs failed. But we'll get into a little bit more of that later. Anyways, this is the Samsung Q1 UMPC. We'll go ahead and take a little quick tour around it here. This is the front. You can see it's got a 7-inch uh, screen here, LCD display here. It is a passive touch screen. As you can see, I can use my finger to touch the screen. And... It has a 3DS-like, original 3DS, silver stylus like this. So I can tap on things. Kind of hard to do this through the viewfinder of my camera. But you can see you can tap on stuff like that. And there's your Windows Experience Index of 2.8. Um, this was uh, last updated on December 31st. Uh, currently, the specs on this machine, uh, if I can close out of this, there we go are an Intel Core Solo you no I don't want to upgrade Windows Vista you can't even do that through anytime upgrade anymore but uh, oh crap I just lost it you gotta, you gotta love uh, trying to record with one hand right anyways um, anyways um, this machine has an Intel Core Solo U1500 at 1.33 gigahertz 2 gigabytes of RAM, Windows Vista Business 32 bit with Service Pack 2, and uh, an 80 gigabyte ZIF hard drive, 1.8 inch ZIF drive. These machines, um, this, these are the typical specs for these machines. The only thing that would be upgraded would have been the Core Solo. Most of these machines shipped with uh, very low power Intel Celerons, usually Celeron M. Some had um, some had uh, regular Celerons. The original model of this had the Intel A110 CPU, which was a variant of the Celeron M, and uh, was a very crappy CPU. It was only 800 megahertz. So Samsung really did us a favor by adding a Core Solo. This particular machine was released in 2006. Um, however, some of them, or actually no, this one was made in 2009. I think the line of these came out in late 2006 or 7, if I remember correctly. But uh, Samsung, the goal, what they did was they used an older CPU on this machine so that uh, it would be, quote, Vista capable. So let's go ahead and take a little product tour. Uh, if I can, hopefully there will be enough light so you guys can see. Sorry about that, guys. I had to take a uh, Skype call, a pretty important Skype call. Anyways, um, and ironically on this. Anyways, 
So I was going to give you guys the product tour of this machine. Um, hopefully there's enough light. My room has terrible lighting, or my tech lab has terrible lighting, so uh, you'll have to bear with me here. My camera doesn't have a built-in light either. So The front of the uh, Q1 Ultra Premium has the split keyboard uh, with keys on both sides. It's very peculiar because when you're typing on this, it's First of all, the keys, if you have very, I have smaller fingers, but if you have fatter, fat fingers, it can be a real pain in the ass to type on this thing because the keys are so small. The only key that's the exception to the rule here is the space key, which you probably can't see because there's not enough light in this room, even with the window wide open <laughs> and the light above on. Um... To type numbers, the number keys share the top row up here of keys. You have to turn NumLock on to do numbers and symbols. You'll see some of these keys, like the B key is the apostrophe. You have to push symbol and then B. But unlike NumLock, where you have to push NumLock, type the numbers you want, turn NumLock off, with the symbol key, you have to push that. You don't hold it or turn it on. You, it just it goes for one symbol and then... You and then you have to turn it back on if you want to type another one. It's a strange keyboard layout. In addition to that, you have your arrow key substitutes here and your enter button here. Underneath that, you have your left and right mouse click buttons for the mouse, which is over here. It's kind of like a 3DS um, uh, joystick. Basically, you use this to control the cursor on the screen and then you use your left-right buttons over here to click. Um, it actually has two modes. You'll notice it has mouse mode and internet mode. Mouse mode makes it operate like a normal mouse or touchpad, whereas internet mode, which I don't have the proper driver or software installed for that to work, allows you to select different hyperlinks and stuff like that. So it works kind of just like a, a menu selection with uh, arrow keys instead with physical buttons instead of a uh, analog mouse. Uh, we also have a fingerprint biometric sensor down here under the Intel Core Solo sticker here. There's a fingerprint biometric sensor because imagine having to type a password in, a very long password, an apple a day keeps the doctor away perhaps, on this little keyboard. That'd be a pain. And it would take you just a, probably a good five minutes just to log into your computer. And we have our nice little Windows Vista capable sticker there, premium ready. Up here we have the indicator lights. There's the hard drive activity light, which isn't lit right now. Oh, there it goes. Blinked for a second there. There's the wireless light, charge light, power light. I think this light here, there's a light here. I think that was for the GPS, but this model doesn't have that. And then, of course, the mouse light. Maybe that's the select light, because this one has a mouse, so that might be mouse mode, and the other one, I think, means select mode. There are also some touch-sensitive buttons here. Come on, camera, focus. There's the uh, menu button, which requires special software, which I do not have installed. The volume up and down buttons. And there's a button that says UDF, and I'm not exactly sure what that does. I have to do some research on that. Anyways, and then on the bottom, underneath the Samsung logo, which you probably can't see, there are dual microphones down here. Plus a 0.3 megapixel webcam, if I can get the camera to focus on it. There it goes. We'll go ahead and take a look at the side here. On this side, you have the uh, lanyard loop here for, uh, I guess you could put the stylus on there if you wanted to, although it'd be kind of inconvenient since the stylus sheath is on the other side. You have a uh, power button, physical button, and then this is the switch, the slider switch. You slide it down to turn it on, and there's a hold switch here. You can, like the PSP, you can slide it up there to prevent someone from accidentally turning it on. On the other side, we have the charger, which I have connected, charger port, which is, again, as I said before, I have it connected because this one has a defective battery, unfortunately, so the battery only goes to about 70% and then immediately dies, or spikes, as I always used to say. And then, I'll go ahead and open this up for you guys here. Kind of hard to do with one hand, but uh, underneath this little plastic cover here, we have, which is amazing for a UMPC, full-size VGA and Ethernet, and a USB 2.0. I'm amazed it has full-size VGA, and I really like that because I can plug it into an external monitor, connect an external mouse and keyboard, and I'm all set. 
or it has built-in Bluetooth so I could use a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard as well and the built-in Ethernet really helps because though it has wireless wireless is well as some say for chumps and uh, while I kind of have to use wireless at my house I have a router that I can directly connect it to in the office so that I can uh, download large files or a whole crap load of updates there's also a control alt delete button there too so if you have this joined to a domain instead of having to hit control alt delete on this little keypad you can hit that button instead just like they have on most modern windows tablets on top here you have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack another USB 2.0 port which is again impressive for a UMPC to have at least two USB ports most only had one or they had to have an external adapter for them and then you have your SD card slot there your ventilation port and a camera button which I'll show you on the back there's actually a camera um, but the camera button was used to take photos with the Samsung video camera application. There's also a little uh, rubber bit here. Yeah, that's rubber. There's a rubber bit here. I'm assuming that's for an antenna. So if you had a GPS installed in this thing, you could use that would be your GPS antenna. And then on the back here, we don't really have much, but we do have here a rear-facing camera, just like the modern iPads of today. This was your shutter click here. This model does not have that, but I think that had a uh, shutter in there. There's also a kickstand here, which folds out, which is what I was using to prop this thing up. Uh, it's a little hard to do with one hand, but um, you can use this kickstand here to prop the system up. Like if you're at a coffee shop, all you got to do is sit it down like that, and there you go. And then here's the battery pack right here, which needs to be replaced because it is not holding a full charge and then of course over here on the right hand side you have the stylus sheath and stylus here anyways so that's the uh, Samsung Q1 UMPC look around um, just so, before I get any questions about this machine I wanted to answer a few questions that I know I have the answer to uh, first of all can this thing game ha ha two can you do what is this thing useful for it's basically just as useful as a netbook for word processing email and uh, well maybe not word processing with this keyboard although you could connect a bluetooth or external keyboard which would work but having to lug that around with you is a bitch within itself um, mainly I would just say web and email with this I mean Vista does have voice recognition so you could use uh, Windows speech recognition to write your emails um, but uh, for now, I think UMPCs are more of a to are more of toys or vintage collectors' items. Uh, you can there was one new I saw on eBay for thirty five hundred dollars. It was a brand new sealed Sony Vio UX two eighty P. This I got for a hundred bucks with tax, um, with no OS, and I loaded Vista on it. I'll probably be upgrading this thing. I wish you could upgrade the Core Solo to a Duo. Uh, or Core 2 Duo, for that matter, so you could get 64-bit cap capabilities and uh, have a dual-core CPU. The problem is the CPU soldered, and, well, in that case, you're kind of screwed. Though I have seen some people desolder the Core Solo and install a Core 2 Duo. I'm not that advanced, though, so I would not be able to do that. But, yeah, that is the Samsung Q1 UMPC. If you're looking to buy one of these, eBay is probably your best bet. You could check Craigslist, but um, I got this one on eBay for a bargain. And there are not just Samsung brands. There are some from OQO, a defective or a defunct company. Uh, there's uh, Sony made the Vio UX series. Asus made one, and several other brands. Toshiba made a Libretto. Uh, Tosh the Librettos were actually some of the first UMPC slash netbooks back in the 90s. And I might acquire one of those soon, so stay tuned. Anyways, I guess uh, that's my re little review slash tour of the Samsung Q1 UMPC, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully, it'll be the next episode of Luigi's Mansion. See you guys then.